there are four factors that you want to consider when you're delegating duties to unlicensed staff. So if you're delegating a particular modality uh, to your unlicensed staff, there are four things that you want to keep in mind. The first is this. There has to be a physician-patient relationship. So you want to make sure that you have seen this patient, you have made a determination of what their diagnosis is, and you've developed a treatment plan of which a portion of that you're going to delegate to that unlicensed staff in your practice. And so you want to make sure that you do have a physician-patient relationship. The second thing is you want to make sure that the person you're delegating to has been fully trained and is experienced enough to be able to deliver that quality care on your behalf on your delegation authority uh, to the patient. So you wanna make sure that they are fully trained and educated in the service in which they're going to be performing, in the task that you've given them. Uh, the third is this, you wanna make sure uh, that someone is on site who is licensed uh, to be able to uh, oversee or supervise or as the law states that provide assistance uh, to the person who is delivering that care. Uh, this means that if you're the only physician, the only licensed personnel in your practice, and you delegate a particular duty to an unlicensed chiropractic assistant, in those cases, you can't delegate it and go to lunch. Uh, that means you also can't delegate it on Wednesday and have the staff member come in on Thursday if you're going to be um, out on the links, uh, as an example. You want to make sure that someone who is licensed to perform those tasks is there and available on site to provide assistance. Uh, that's number three. The fourth thing is you want to make sure that whatever you're delegating is not just within the scope of practice. Of course, that, that seems like a given, but also within your education, training, and experience. Uh, that means that you're not able to send a staff member to go get trained on a particular modality and then delegate to them if you are not also trained in that particular modality. Now, we saw this a lot um, with uh, low laser therapies and things along those lines where we would have chiropractic physicians who would send staff members to be trained, but they themselves had not gone through the training. Now, I believe uh, we don't see that near as much, but we want to make sure that you know that you have to be fully trained and educated on the modality that you're going to be delegating to your staff. Um, this isn't just something you can have them be educated in uh, as well. So the four things, again, physician-patient relationship, um, the person you're delegating to has to be trained and experienced to be able to deliver that task. Uh, that someone who is licensed to be able to perform that task is on site and available uh, to provide assistance. And the fourth is um, that it has to be within your training and expertise as well. Hopefully this helps you out. We'll catch you next week.